G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode. So as you can probably see behind me, those clouds are not looking great. So we are going to be looking at another inside job this week. Uh, we've already got a, a wet deck. So we're gonna be inside and we're gonna clean up that last room, which is looking dreadful right now. Take up all the floor and it's gonna be a bit of a big job, but we're gonna clean this whole room up. So I'm going to get started. So the first job I'm going to start on is basically ripping up all this floor, getting rid of this temporary settee that we put in. We put some temporary benches here. This is all just to get a feel of how the kitchen was going to look and the height of the floor. We, we didn't know if we wanted to keep it at that level or drop it down like we did. Um, obviously you can see what way we went with that. But day one, rip all this stuff out and let's get the bones back uh, so we can clean up all the water line and underneath the bilge area. Just finished cleaning out everything all the timber is gone and we're left with a less disgusting mess so 
I've gone through and got the bulk of everything out of all the grooves and I've done a quick vacuum, got all the water out of both all, all those bilges and yeah just sucked up all the water, just done a preliminary clean and we're ready to start the grinding and cleaning up phase. So we've got these household 240 volt uh, power switch to come off. Um, so that's what they were. They've all got to come out. Uh, it's pretty horridly put in. They've just drilled some holes, stuck some bolts through, and then put a tack weld on each one. And if you bend this one back around, you can see they've made a right mess of just completely just welding it on uh, as well. So that's pretty horrid. We're going to take all them off. Um, I've already done the other side. Then we've got all those uh, weld lugs like we have in all the other rooms. We're going to take them off. Now a lot of spots in here have also been just hacked away with an oxy cut. And uh, that's all been oxy cut out. It would be nice just to leave it there with, for additional strength, but they've cut it out to lighten the load a little bit. Uh, it's all oxy cut up here. Uh, that is going to be all nice and clean. I don't want to have you can see where it hasn't had paint and it's uh, it's just coming off because there's been bits in there that haven't had paint get into all those little grooves or the valleys and troughs. You can see in here there's no paint in that little trough and in all these that's just rusting up. You can see some horrid bits of rust in the corners. They're going to be prepared ready for blasting all under here corroded all the paint hasn't been ad adhered properly so rust under there so there's a fair bit of work to go in here down in the bilge here is interesting okay, I can just grab this tar paint and it just comes off all over so obviously that was never going to be a long lasting solution so yeah we've got a bit of work to do in this kill in this build yeah so we've got a lot of thinking to do over in this side uh, this is where the prop shaft would have gone through the Prop shaft probably would have continued through this hole. And this design normally has a Ford Lehman mounted here. And yeah, the, the prop goes all the way through. I don't know why it'd be that long. Um, but you go through this bearing, there'll be another bearing mounted there. That's the prop shaft um, stern tube. Goes out through there and there's another chamber behind that. In the art cabin. And it exits out the back there. So this is a long prop shaft. So this is in here is the same as the other section where all that paint is just gonna come off. I think there's a layer of mud on here as well. So I we have to peel all that mud up. So we'll tackle the, the bilge in a episode in the future. We're just gonna do all these walls and a lot of rust in some spots and just start getting this ready to be prepped. So it's getting late today. I'm gonna to come back later on through the week and start grinding and cleaning up the floor and try and get rid of all that rust. So I'll see you in a couple of days. So I'm back at the boat for another day's work and I'm gonna start getting into tackling the walls, getting them all ground up so all the dirt's off and we'll see how far we get with grinding all the welded lugs off. So I'm getting into it.
All right, so I think I've burnt out another grinder. This one is dead. So I don't think these cheap grinders like these wire wheels, but I don't have much to go. I've just got this bay and that bay, and uh, all the grinding is basically done for the cleanup. And then it's all a matter of just getting it all prepped, all the welding, and then I'm gonna come in with the blaster and tie it all up properly. So I'll probably just get one more cheap grinder and that'll finish this little job off. Uh, but I just have a look down here and keep getting this puddle up here. So I've actually been um, constantly just sucking it up with my wet back and just keep popping up. So underneath this tar paint, which I can just peel off, is what's called pitch. It's like a, a bitumen a resin type. Um, I've mainly seen people use pitch to seal in the ballast on um, wooden boats, but it's here in this steel boat. Um, so what I might do is just a little bit of exploration, just chisel some out. I'll, I'll vacuum up this water and start chiseling a little bit out because this is the deepest bilge in the boat. So the water might be coming in and, and pooling at this spot. So I might just uh, chisel some away. I don't know how deep the pitch goes or how uh, deep the, the ballast, the steel ballast is in this boat. We might just um, yeah, chisel a little bit out and yeah, see what's underneath. So if you can see that, we've got uh, a steel ballast underneath here. So very thick steel bars welded in. Um, I don't know how deep they go. I would assume they would go all the way because you want the weight as low as you can go, which will be a tremendous amount of uh, weight down in the kill, which is nice. And unfortunately they put a heap of this uh, pitch on here. Um, and it hasn't adhered. You can hear that's pretty solid there. Uh, yeah, not very adhered. However, it shouldn't be this thick either. Um, if it's this thick, it's it's always going to move, and uh, it should probably be half this thickness. But um, at least I know what the ballast is, and that's pretty solid. Um, but there is water down there, so it's not sealed. Um, so we're going to have to pull this pitch up dry it out and seal that bilge up properly. So it's probably gonna be a um, pouring some sort of hilti, epoxy resin or something to uh, just, yeah, finalize this um, to give it a nice flat base. So the rain's picked up again. It's like uh, end of November. Next week is summer. Normally this time of year, like we're drenching in heat, like 34, 35 degree days, and all sun, no rain. But uh, this whole month has been nearly a wipeout for me. I've been, I was actually wanting to get the whole hull complete. That hard dodger was going to be done, and then I would be whip blasting the whole lot, giving it another undercoat. That was my plan. Um, having the steering column in, uh, all those steps done, but this rain has slowed me down so much. Um, so I didn't get there, 
um, and I was hoping that the whole boat would be all sealed up and I'm getting drenched here now the rain's coming in I'm gonna move over this seat because that seat's getting me wet but the rain set in normally all this greenery would be gone it'd be all just dead grass or dirt um, the little gazebo is keeping us all nice and dry. But yeah, summer next week, and I'm having to put up with all this rain. But my boat is not sealed up, so I've got to keep an eye on the rain, make sure like none of my extension cords are getting wet. Um, so that slows me down. Yeah, but uh, we'll keep popping along and uh, just trying to do those odd jobs that we can get done. Uh, but yeah. Slow goings. So, I think I've come up with a nice plan to deal with this pitch in the build. So, the pitch has got some gaps down the sides. It's letting some water down. So we need to stop that. So, the only way we can stop that is if we reheat it up and let it resettle and seal it against the, the substrate and the, the walls there. So I need to heat this up. So pitch heats up at 55 degrees is its um, melting temperature. So it's not hard to heat it up with a, to 55 degrees. If you're just doing a small area, you can even do it with a hairdryer. Um, however, this is a big area. Um, so we're gonna need to heat up a lot of surface area and we need it to basically liquefy and resettle down at the bottom ideally i wouldn't want pitch in here but i'll never get this out now um, it's, if you want to blast it out it just clumps up into the little balls and you'll never get it out uh, it'll just be a nightmare um, you can use chemicals but who wants to do that and that the, all the ballast is in there there's a couple of ton of ballast in the bottom of this boat i don't want to be moving that either so it's there, I'm gonna deal with that. Um, all this two inch thick of uh, pitch here, we're going to get all that off. And we're gonna leave the pitch, we're gonna resettle it to the top of that ballast there. So it's gonna be a nice smooth transition, nice level area. Then I'm gonna get some good adhesive epoxy um, like epi res and we're going to basically um, key up the surface and then pour some self-leveling epi res down the bottom and up the sides of this bilge and that will give me a hard surface um, and seal in this pitch so that no water will be able to get down the sides again so yeah we'll smooth over the pitch and then we'll pour epi res over the top and then that will be nice smooth surface and that will be painted with a bilge coat uh, like a nice white clean coat which we can wash out whenever we need uh, so i have a way forward um, the means of heating up the pitch i haven't got that sussed out yet um, so it may end up being that i use an electrical heat gun for electrical work uh, i may have to hire a, like a jet wave heater um, or I have an oxyacetylene kit that might just do it too. Uh, one word of warning though with pitch and anything like this, it is full of coal tar. If you don't know what that is, it's similar to asbestos. If you breathe it in, it's really horrid. It's all right when it's in this crystallized glassy form. It's, well, it's not all right, it's okay. Uh, as long as you're wearing your P2 respirator. Uh, but when you heat it up, masks, it has to be filtered. Um, even if you've got uh, air fed um, face masks that's better because it is horrid it can kill you so look up coal tar if you want look up the msds online it is horrid so just be careful of all that coal tar so yeah that's filling you in how we're going to address the bilge but that's going to be another day all right i'm all grubby from doing all the grinding so i'll run you through what's left so it's all we got time for. I've got all the walls prepped and the floors done. That was a big job, it's a big area. Um, 
So the next time we do a bit of work in here, we've got to prep all these oxy cut bits out. Um, we've got a lot of corrosion in here. It, there seems to be an oxy cut across this piece here, all the way along the top. So that has to be all re-prepped because there's a sharp edge on the corners. It's the same on that side, on that stringer. And uh, there's more pieces in here that's been cut out. So once again, that web, but these are all corroded and horrid looking. So that has to come out. Uh, we've got oxy cut down this web here. What it appears like is that I had plans to weld plates in here and they had at some stage because you can see the cut across here and then they've cut up here and they've cut all this out so this was all filled in and that was all filled in and then there would have been a plate coming up here so this appears like they were going to weld in a water tank um, so it would have been a, a built into the whole water tank across this section here which would be nice, um, they're good, good ideas as long as you keep the uh, preparation under control and make sure it's all painted. Um, a lot of steel boats have the under, under deck hull water tanks. Um, but now that that's gone, I'm not gonna replace it. I'm gonna re-prep all these areas and um, put them back to right. And it was the same on this side. You can see this plate here, it's all corroded down the end there from the oxy cutting. Um, they've, they've cut down here, they've cut the plate out of here and up, and they've cut out those infill spots on both sides. So that would have been a water tank in there, or a diesel tank. So I'll have to re-prep those areas, that's still to be done. Uh, a lot of these have just been poorly welded in and so they've got to be fixed up and fix up these rusted plates along here uh, that wall still needs to be dressed this had wall linings and that on it at some stage just glued straight to the steel and uh, so that's all going to be prepped and cleaned up and a few little webs cut off it's the steel that's pretty rusted so it's to be blasted this is the deck step going down here we've got a nice sturdy piece of uh, reinforcement here unfortunately that's not a very thick plate and these aren't very thick structural supports either going down to either side of the keel so I would like that to be strengthened a lot if anything, we should cut this off, extend this pole all the way down and have some really thick reinforcement going across here and have it welded all the way down. Would have liked to seen this go all the way down to the keel and completely welded on the bottom of the keel and then braced again. But that's only three mil thick either side. It's not strong enough, so might extend that down, get some uh, 25 mil thick uh, bar to strengthen it up and even put some bracing on the other side of here to strengthen that whole wall up. You can even stitch weld it up here all the way to just give it even that more support, spread that load out if it wants to move. So we've got these come off and yeah then just need and we've got to put more bracing in for the flooring uh, we've got to have a, a walkway go all the way across here to the door settees going there so we need to weld in a plate um, where the table stand will go so um, it's going to have a retractable table that goes up and down uh, we'll need to weld in a reinforcement plate for that and we've got a kitchen going in that side uh, so we've got some taps to weld in so there's a bit more work to do in here um, and then we're going to move on to the roof uh, where, where we've extended these 
windows, we're going to have to put structural supports beams in between those gaps. Um, and then yeah, clean up all the rust and weld up um, where I've done the companion way. So there's a bit more work, but uh, yeah, we're looking a lot better now. It's all clean and we're able to start work. So once we've done all those modifications, ground all those pieces that we've just spoke about, then we'll come in and we'll whip blast everything and give it a nice new paint job. So that's what we're up to in here. And the weather is gonna be better next week. So we will get back onto the hard dodger up there. Uh, looking like we're gonna have a whole week of sunny weather. So let's hope it stays like that. And um, yeah, let us know what you think in the comments and uh, leave a like and we'll get back to everyone. Thanks guys, see you next week.